Welcome to the Wild Soul Cast. I'm your host, Anna Kinkela. This is a sacred space where we hold deep conversations on spirituality, conscious leadership, feminism, creativity, and how to more meaningfully and intentionally nurture connection within ourselves and with others. Welcome to episode 19 of the Wild Soul Cast. This is your host, Anna Kinkela, and this week we are going to be diving into the topic of inner power and how you can truly unleash this into your business and into your life. There is so much to say about this topic, and the place that I really want to start is unpacking the word power and your personal associations with that word. So how is power modeled to you? How was someone standing in their power modeled to you? you know, throughout your life? What was your exposure to that in the social and cultural environment that you grew up in? When I bring up the word power, you know, just kind of tune into what comes up in your own body. What are some of the reactions that your body has? Where does that show up for you? And the reason that I ask this question and that I ask you to reflect on this piece is, That, you know, for decades, for centuries, having power, embodying power has not necessarily been a positive thing. There are so many examples out there of toxic power, of irresponsible power, of authoritarian power that really doesn't respect and lift up the sovereignty of other people, right? And for all of the women that I work with, You know, they really come from this soulful, heart-centered space, and a lot of them really resist in owning their power because of this kind of unconscious programming that I think we all have around the concept of what it means to truly stand in our power and what that looks like on an everyday basis. And so I think that combined with this piece where women have really been socially conditioned to not be in the spotlight, to remain small and invisible in the background, right? To support everyone else before they really support and nurture themselves. All of that is something that's very much been conditioned into every single woman that I know, including myself. That's why women tend to hold a lot of the nurturing roles in our society. They tend to be teachers and nurses, right? All of these professions that are typically geared towards nurturing and supporting other people. And also this piece around, you know, most women haven't really seen a lot of female leaders in the spotlight. It's only just been within this last year where we've seen an influx of more women joining traditional leadership roles because most people, when they think of a leader, think of, you know, politicians or CEOs, you know, business owners that come front and center in the media in some way. Those are the people that are most visible, right? And so there's also been this conditioning of, I've never seen someone who looks like me, um, who is in the spotlight, who is considered a leader and a powerful leader. So on the one hand, you know, there are all of these associations that we have with power and what it means to be in power. And then there's all this conditioning where women have been taught you know, directly and indirectly that they shouldn't speak, they shouldn't voice their opinions, they should remain small. In combination with not being able to see a lot of female leaders in positions of power, that has really made 
you know, this topic of what it actually means to unleash your inner power, fairly elusive and also kind of scary. You know, if I unleash my inner power, you know, what what are other people going to think of me? Is my voice going to be heard and validated? And are people going to hate me for it? Right? When they truly see me for who I am, are people going to dislike me, reject me, not love me? Right? There are all of those stories that rise to the surface because ultimately, when you unleash your inner power, you are voicing yourself really strongly and loudly and clearly for everyone to hear. So that is inherently scary. And there's fears of visibility, fears of not being loved, fears of judgment, like all of those parts that then rise to the surface. So it's a multi-layered cake of, you know, conditioning and associations and stories that really have to kind of be deconstructed and shifted within ourselves in order for us to feel good claiming that power and also to feel good about knowing what our inner power really looks like in action. In other words, the way that someone expresses their inner power might not be the way that you express your own inner power. There's multiple ways to be embodied in your power and it doesn't have to look any particular way. It doesn't have to fit in any kind of box. You just really have to feel like you are in touch with the well of power that is within you and deeply know that it's authentic for you too, right? That it's, that it's in the vibration of your own truth. I talk a lot about the fact that we all have our own individual energetic blueprint and Part of unleashing your own inner power is figuring out the energetic blueprint. And, you know, I want to normalize the fact that we're always in a process of learning throughout our life. So this is not a fixed concept. In other words, it's not like this map that you figure out, but it's something that you reclaim one piece at a time. And, you know, our rise into our own power is actually a lifetime process because if we're expanding and growing, we're always ascending into different levels of our inner power and recognizing who we truly are. So there's no arrival again, you know, and I try to highlight this as much as possible because, you know, I the clients that I work with really tend to kind of get stuck into, but how do I do this? And can you give me the steps to do it? Right. And it's an involvement. It's a continual involvement. And you get to a point where you actually feel confident in yourself and you feel confident that who you are being in the moment is good enough and that it's safe for you to speak and be who you are, regardless of how other people outside of you react to that, right? Because we can't control other people. And then from that point, you just further build that sacred energetic container of power. What I would invite you to do is to tune into what would it look like for you to express your own sacred power? Meaning what would that feel like for you in your body? How would you know that you were feeling and channeling your inner power out into the world? And write those feelings down. Write down what it would feel like. Would it feel expansive? Would it feel like a fire in your stomach? Like what are, you know, what are some descriptive words that you can really tap into that describe that? And What does it mean for you to express your own inner power through your actions? So how you behave, what you do in the world, and then through your words, 
how would you speak to yourself? How would you talk to yourself, right? And how would you talk to others? What would that really look like? And I encourage you to really write down, you know, this is what I would be telling myself if I was really embodying my own inner power. This is how I would be thinking about money, about relationships, about my business, about my partner, about my possibilities. And this is how I would really use my power in the world. Right? How would what would that look like? What would it look like for you to use your power, you know, in your business with others? How would you utilize that energy? How would you spread it around you? And, you know, as you tune into all of those different areas, so it's how would that feel in your body? What would your actions look like? What would you be thinking and how would you be interacting and talking with others? Really allow yourself to kind of draw that picture and create that energetic avatar. And, you know, no matter where you are in your evolvement journey, there is always more that you can expand into. So if you feel in touch with your inner power, that's amazing. And this is such a great opportunity for you to take it a step further is what would my next level of involvement in my own power look like? How would I expand? The reason why it's so important for you to tune into this energetic avatar of what it looks like for you to be in touch with your own inner power is that we are within our power so individually because we have our own energy and our own unique ways of being that isn't replicated by other people around us. So the way that you see another coach standing in their power might not be the version of you standing in your power. And, you know, it's great for us to look up to people and, you know, to admire people and get inspiration from them. However, where, you know, people get into trouble is when they start to compare themselves. So if you're someone who's introverted, your way of being embodied in your own inner power is not going to look the same as someone who is extroverted, right? And vice versa. And so we all have our own particular way of doing that. And it's, it's a way that is going to speak to someone, but it's not going to speak to everyone. And that's okay because you're not in business. You're not in your life to please everyone and to make sure everyone likes you, even though, you know, our human self really wants that quite a bit. It's all about really claiming who you are. And being okay with that, knowing that that's enough, that that's more than enough, and that that's what actually helps you overflow once you recognize your own enoughness. And so the question, you know, now becomes, how do I actually unleash my inner power? What does that mean? You know, it's it's a pretty ambiguous concept. And I want to talk about the way that I approach that work and the way that I've seen it beautifully and organically unfold for my clients. And I think that that's actually a really important piece of this is that you cannot force yourself into your inner power. I think sometimes, you know, when we see toxic power is actually when people don't feel very good about themselves. And then they, you know, exert power over others and lead from a place of not enoughness within themselves. And that really gets to be oftentimes abusive and really unhealthy for other people around them. And I think, you know, in today's politics environment, we have so many examples of that. So, you know, power is not about exerting control, which is 
such an important distinction. Power is actually simply about being all of yourself and doing it from a place of integrity and connection with your heart and the heart of other people. And when you try to, you know, approach inner power from a place of control, whether it's about you projecting a certain image or doing what you think you should be doing or trying to exert control over other people, it doesn't work. It's not effective and it's not embodied. Unleashing inner power is all about truly being able to ground into yourself and who you are at your core and allow others to see that in you. It's both simple and complex. Simple because once you're actually comfortable being yourself, you just are and there's no thinking or trying about it. You just are. But complex because there are all of these different ways that We protect ourselves from hurt in this world, and part of our really mission as leaders in terms of our own inner work is to be able to negotiate those boundaries differently. So not take down all the walls because we still need to protect ourselves in healthy ways, but not put them up to the extent that people can't really see who we are, not to the extent that people can't feel us, can't feel our own individual energy. And I see this happening so much for, you know, entrepreneurs because they try to model their business or what they're talking about or who they're being, you know, according to what they've seen other entrepreneurs do. And it doesn't end up serving them in the long term because if it works for this entrepreneur, it's because that's genuine for them. That's their truth. That's just how they are. And that's not necessarily going to work for you if that's not who you are. So that's why this internal work is so important, you know, not just in your life, but in your business, because the more that you can unveil yourself and unleash your truth, the more you're in your power, the more you are in your genuine energy and projecting that out into the world, the more that people actually start to see you for who you are. And that magnetizes people to you without you trying so hard. So unleashing inner power is actually about reclaiming what parts of you don't think is likable about you. And I want to explain that a little more. As we grow up in the world, you know, we learn that there are some things that perhaps some people aren't willing to accept about us, some things that people don't like about us. And usually these experiences happen very early on in our life you know, ways that we've felt rejected or ways that we haven't been validated or when we've shared something with someone that's been a caretaker, someone that we've admired and we've experienced or perceived rejection from those people, then, you know, that, you know, puts a part of ourselves into a closet that we lock away into the depths of our unconsciousness and don't look at again. And these parts of you inherently aren't bad parts, but at some point you were made to feel like they were, whether it was how you expressed your emotions or, you know, if there was a talent that you had that you were rejected for or your intuitive gifts or, you know, I could just like name off so many things that people get rejected for. And because as a young child or a young person, you don't have the same skill set or the same level of confidence that you do as an adult, naturally that child, that young person, learned that maybe I shouldn't talk about this anymore. Maybe I shouldn't show this side of myself with others because I'm going to get the same response. And that totally makes sense, right? But one of the things that doesn't happen as you grow up 
is that that belief that you need to hide this part of yourself never gets updated, right? You never renegotiate those boundaries within yourself. And you're actually not conscious of those parts that you've secretly hidden away. And those are the parts of you that need to be reclaimed in order for you to actually feel into your power. And so like I've talked about on the podcast a couple of times, the unconscious piece of this is so crucial because consciously you generally cannot access these parts of you. You're not actually aware of them until you do the deeper inner work to find them and reclaim them. And in its essence, that is what unleashing your inner power is about. You start to look at the parts that feel uncomfortable to you and you face them, you dialogue with them, you get to know them. You start to feel appreciation for the ways that they've served you. So instead of like pushing them away and being angry at those uncomfortable parts of you, you turn towards them and you say, wow, I recognize what you've done for me. I recognize the ways that you've helped me survive, the ways that you've helped me navigate the world. And I don't need you in the same way anymore. And I'm ready to reclaim this part of me. I'm ready to update this within myself and see myself and let others see me because now I am capable of holding this space. I'm capable and powerful. And now I am safe to show myself to others. And in that moment, what you're able to give to yourself is a restorative experience. It's a healing experience. And that's not something that you can receive from external things or from wielding external power that isn't embodied within your core and within the truth of who you are. If you've ever heard you know, the phrase that your shadows are your entrance into the light within you. That's very much, you know, the, the energy of what I'm saying. And I also really want to stress that the light that you are walking into isn't like this gentle, transparent, soft kind of light. No, it's, it's like a beam that shines so bright that it can be seen on the other side of the universe, right? It's powerful. It's strong. It shines so warmly that it expresses the depth of who you are. I want to give you a concrete example of this because it's happened so many times with my clients that I know that this is actually what leads them into embodying their inner power. I shared about this last week on my Instagram profile in one of my posts, but I had a session with a client where we were helping her turn towards an uncomfortable emotion. And, you know, I had her start to tap into understanding it, dialoguing with it, getting to know it. And through that unveiling process and the energetic work that took place in that space, that uncomfortable emotion ended up turning into her inner power, her well of inner power. And like I said, this has happened several times with my clients where I've helped them work with an uncomfortable part, an uncomfortable emotion, and that has transformed into the realization and the embodiment of their power. This wasn't something that I was consciously aiming for in that particular moment. Because the nature of this work is that I'm facilitating and guiding 
people to tap into what's naturally within them, the resources that are naturally within them to essentially unveil what's already there to make them consciously realize and experience their true selves within that space. But I knew that if we kept going, if we kept unveiling, if we kept turning, that she would come into this space, that she would feel that within herself and experience it within herself. And this was only the fifth session that we had. So just imagine how much more there is to unfold and really deepen into. All of this to say that you have this natural ability within you. You have the resources. You have everything that you need right now in this moment as you are listening to this to really unleash and unveil and step into and feel the innate power that you're holding. And it's really about energetically unburdening the parts of you that feel like they need to protect you all the time from the world, from yourself, and really being able to witness and hold all of who you are as you experience those parts of you. Because the witnessing and the experiencing is so important in this work You can say all the mantras, write them out a hundred times, but the experience is what actually gets you to feel it and experience it in your body. That's the important part. There's a reason why people say that, you know, it's much more valuable for you to put your money into experiences rather than material objects. Because when you have an experience of traveling somewhere or doing something, that experience sticks in your memory, right? You can, you know, go back to your trip to Ireland or Bali or whatever. And if you close your eyes, you can actually, you know, feel some of the sensations you felt in that moment. And that can instantly cause a bodily reaction within you. It's, it's in your body. It's imprinted there, right? Versus, you know, buying a material object, which is fine, like nothing wrong with that, but it's not tied to an actual sensory memory for you. And so the same is true of our own internal work is that you really have to have the experience so it's imprinted on your body in your energetic space. And that's what helps to shift it and change it. If you, you know, slap on, you know, affirmations and things, even though like it's not a bad thing, right? That doesn't get down to your core. That doesn't give you the experience, the felt experience of it. This does. This is what shifts it. This is what unleashes it. And, you know, it's not like this, you know, uncontrollable wave of power that just comes out and you don't know what to do with it. It's it's calm. It's peaceful. It's embodied. It's grounded within you. And then your actions and the ways that you walk in the world start to shift naturally. And that being said... It's important for you to also tune into how am I acting, behaving in all of these areas of my life? How am I talking to myself? And is that in alignment with validating my inner power? So this is where that first bit that I shared with you is so important Um, Because as you're doing this deeper unconscious reprogramming work, and that is helping you to start to energetically show up differently without you consciously having to work for it. At the same time, it's also important for you to align your actions and, you know, really think about how you talk about things that help you to reaffirm those unconscious shifts and help you to bring it into embodiment much sooner because embodiment is, you know, mind, body, soul, and it's also your conscious, intentional, external action. And that's what creates the more long-term shifts. And there does come a day where you don't have to think about it as much 
because the more you reinforce a pattern, the more habitual it becomes over time for you. So then you have to think about it much less. So as you're doing this internal work, it's it's important to have those experiences and then really intentionally align the experience you had with your actions in the outside world. And that is what creates long-term sustainable change in both your energetic body and then also in your external world. I am extremely committed to guiding women leaders into rising and claiming their own inner power. And I really consider it a big piece of my work in the world. My group program that is starting towards the end of March is all about this. It's all about doing this deep inner inner work and really helping you turn towards yourself, witness and experience yourself at a whole different level so that you can fully step into your power and into your truth. And I'm pre-enrolling for the group program right now. The benefit of pre-enrolling into the program is that you get, you know, additional perks and the best payment plan option. And so, you know, if this is something that you've been looking at that you know that you need to really tap into within yourself in order to show up fully in your business, then I highly suggest you get in touch with me and chat with me about it. Um, I, you know, talk with each woman who's interested in the program individually because I want to make sure it's a good fit, that it's going to meet your goals and that you're ready to do this work. So you can click the link that's in the show notes to get in touch with me. And I'd love to chat with you further to see if this is a right fit for where you are and where you are going. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. I hope you received what you needed from this episode. And if you are really loving this podcast, if you're receiving value from these episodes, I would be so appreciative if you could leave us a written review, letting us know. It makes it a little bit easier for other folks to find us um, and encourages others to listen. So, so grateful and thankful for you tuning in and being here with me in community. Have a beautiful rest of your week and I will see you next time. 